Uh, sorry, it's a little cramped in here. <laughs> Wasn't really meant for passengers. I'll try not to make this awkward. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, you comfortable? Um, it will suffice. Head that way, back towards the lava. I like your collections. I didn't realize you shared my hobby. Oh, just some bric-a-brac to remind me of home. Who is she? Oh, uh, that's my wife, Grace. Letting her know I'm okay is pretty much job one right now. She's... so beautiful. I didn't realize you had a wife. Ten years and counting. Had a baby boy a year ago. God, it's been a year. And you left her to come here? I came here for her. Her and Hank. Things were getting harder, and it was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. I see. Jim, I know you are a man of honor and great loyalty, so it pains me to ask this of you. But you must not tell the men of Nevik about us. You must not tell anyone we're here. Are you serious? How am I supposed to make a place for your people if nobody knows you exist? You don't know the risks I have taken just in trusting you. I can see your nature, but Nevik... If the Corporation learns their lost colony had survivors after all the pains they took to keep it secret, they would start asking questions, demanding answers. And sooner or later, they will come to take what they think is theirs. Look, I know not everybody has the nicest things to say about Nevik, but Braddock's a good man. I trust him. You do? And he trusts you? I think he does. Then, why did he lie to you about the first colony? Well, I'm gonna have to ask him about that. Until you know? Until you would stake the lives of your family on his loyalties? I ask only that you do not stake the lives of mine. from here. If not, I have marked it on your map. Soon you'll be back in radio range. There is one last thing. Our water purifiers are almost 50 years old. If you can locate a replacement for the one I left in your cockpit, it would be another small step. That and I would be grateful. C4 explosives for the win. Okay, this looks familiar. Hi again. I kinda thought I'd have heard from you by now. Maybe you didn't get my last message? With Hank and the walking? And yes, I realize you can't answer me. Just answer me, okay?
Mayday, Mayday. All units, this is Coronas. We are under attack by Acred Swarm. Large quantities need backup. Does anyone copy? Over. Coronas, roger that. Flying to assist. Be there ASAP. Holy cow, Jim, is that you? I don't know how you're alive, but we need you, brother. Hurry, Coronas out. <laughs> Flyers coming in from the interior canyon. Markham, can you assist? No can do. We've got our own problems in the rack area. Hutchings, can you assist in the deck area? Hutchings? Anybody? It's Jim. The cavalry's arrived. Be right there. Kicking the teeth. My favorite customer is alive. And just in time for the party. Here they come. Show me what you got. Some 
shooting there. I know you have the skills. Okay, okay, you better get going. I can handle myself here. Looks like that's the last of them. Jim, we need you back on the main deck. More bogeys on approach. On my way. Dude, what if they come back?
Is it true you're here at Corona's? Doc? What are you doing back here? I heard the same distress call you did, no doubt. They're trying to find out what's causing this frenzy, and I think the answer's in Kenny's lab. But we need more firepower to punch through. Roger that. I'm inbound. Survival tip number four. Always keep your socks dry walking in extreme frigid conditions. Hypothermia is your greatest enemy, so heat retention and moisture management are key to your survival. Avoid submersion at all costs, and keep a backup pair in your emergency kit. Stay dry. Stay alive. This facility is an emergency lockdown. Elevator lockdown has been bypassed.
to begin decontamination procedure. Initiating diagnostics. Performing containment analysis. Your cooperation is appreciated. Please remember to report any indigenous life forms within the station to the appropriate zone manager. Have a good day. James, over here! Listen, your resident super genius built some kind of experimental machine that's drawing the acrid here and agitating them more than usual. Why would Kovach build something to cause this? You're asking the wrong scientist. See the quarantine room in the center of the lab? Right through the glass there? You blast your way in and put a stop to this mess. We'll keep him off your tail. Jim! Good heavens! How long have you been not dead? Oh, you're just in time to witness my breakthrough. Isn't it spectacular? Look at them all. Over here! Listen, your resident super genius built some kind of experimental machine that's drawing the acrid here and agitating them more than usual. Why would Kovach build something to cause this? You're asking the wrong scientist. See the quarantine room in the center of the lab? Right through the glass there? You blast your way in and put a stop to this mess. We'll keep him off your tail. guys. Unnecessary, I'm 
sure I only needed to adjust the frequency. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. Hope saving your life didn't put you out. Oh no, I forgive you. I know carnage and mayhem is part of your nature, and without it, you just wouldn't be you. Or nearly as useful to me. You made a device that can drive the acrid crazy. Well, I would need to run more experiments to know for sure. Establishing a baseline of sanity for these creatures might be prohibitive of itself. Nevertheless, I'm glad the base was able to witness my breakthrough. What, you telling me you did this on purpose? No, not at all. But the experiment is still a resounding success. The acrid were influenced. Don't you see? I've figured out how they communicate and I've replicated it. In the course of dissecting many varieties of acrid, I found a receptor that they all had in common. You might understand it as sort of a biological radio receiver, but you'd be stupid because it's vastly more complicated than that. T-energy is an unusual element with uniquely resonant electromagnetic properties. It's, it's more than blood and energy. It's how the acrid coordinate with each other. It seems I found a vibration frequency that puts them in an agitated state, which is of limited use itself, but just imagine what else we might be able to do with this. If I can, if I can find the wavelength that would calm the acrid and render them docile, then harvesting tea energy in the quantities we require would be a matter of simple logistics, such as designing a sufficiently massive slaughterhouse. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you in there. It's okay. I actually think better in confined spaces. Auxiliary power systems at 30%. James, a moment. Listen, I don't want to cause a general panic or anything, but just glancing at Coronas while heading in, she's in bad shape. The way the storms are increasing in intensity, I'm concerned it's only a matter of time until the structural integrity is compromised. I don't know, Doc. Seems like a pretty good reason to panic. You got any suggestions? I may. There are some tests I'd like to run, but I'd need your help. Wait for my call and we'll chat properly. In the meantime, I'm sure Braddock wants to catch up with you. They stopped. The acrid are retreating. Looks like Delta Station's in the clear. The swarm is subsiding in the hangar as well. Whatever you did seemed to work, Jim. We're ever thankful. I'm happy to help. Just glad to be back home. Science is not an exact science. At its best, science is, is chaotic and unpredictable. Often produces a foul odor that you cannot scrub from your fingers. Nature has bottomless mysteries and contradictions, a fanfare of ironies and impossibilities. Male seahorses bearing litters. Mm. Frogs consuming their own offspring. Entire population infused with its planet's lifeblood. I've observed these things with my own eyes. I've carved the verities of truth from them with my bare hands. Any answer, and I do mean any answer, can be dissected into being. Any secret can be cut open when the scalpel is sharp enough. This is science, right? 80% uh, patience and 20% is 
cutting things open. <laughs> Until next time, Mother. Hey, boss. Nice to see everything still running as smooth as ever. I knew you were still... <laughs> so where the hell you been? So, you fought a G-class Acrid, fell down the side of a mountain, landed on the other side of Shaq's Peak, and somehow survived for two weeks before you got back into Comrade? Thankfully, the rig was flush with rations and ammo. Lucky timing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if you've got a good luck charm or you are one. Luck feels just like getting my ass kicked. <laughs> Jim, you know, I uh, take you at your word, of course, but uh, I'm sensing there's a little more to your story. Well, now that you mention it, there is this. What is it? Where did you find that? Sensing that you already know the answer to that. Don't toy with me, Peyton. What did you find? Why don't you tell me what I found? We're the first humans to set foot on this planet, so obviously I didn't find some 50-year-old Nevek base, did I? Did you keep your voice down? Is that really all you have to say? No. It's important you understand something, Jim. Keeping the first colony under wraps wasn't my idea. It's one of the terms I had to agree to for Nevek to greenlight this mission in the first place. Perception is vital to their interests. I go to great lengths to conceal such a debacle. Coronas was set to land far, far from the original site, but the storm forced us down here. Nearer to the truth than I could have even ever hoped. Hoped? Why would you hope for this? That's why. General Charles Braddock, commander of the first Neo-Venus Colonial Expeditionary Force. Your old man led the first colony. Led it, and lost it. And he was never the same. Something happened here. Something you would never talk about. Right, so... You're here to what? Fulfill your father's dreams? Redeem his failures? I'm here to solve the energy crisis. And maybe get some answers with your help. Consider this an opportunity. A standing contract for further investigation. Not for Coronas, but for me personally. And I'll pay a premium for your ongoing discretion. So I get to lie to everybody, too? If a word of this reaches Nevek, they'll take back the whole operation. Put it under paramilitary command. I hate lying to the men, Jim, but it's for their own good. Trust me. See what I can see. By the way, Jim, a supply drop came in while you were away, and if I'm not mistaken, we got all the parts we need for a couple of major upgrades to your rig. One of them's a gas torch. I've got some contracts for you on the new pipeline, so uh, I need you ready to do some welding. The other upgrade? Well, I'll just let Gale show you that one.
Man alive, Jim. I'm glad you're back. It was a long couple of weeks. Of course I told him you'd make it. Never a doubt in my mind. Oh, won't Braddock be happy? His favorite, back from the dead. LaRoche is happy to see you too. Hey, major, major upgrade time for you. Parts came in for an acetylene torch. Sexy, right? I can slap that together in no time. But the other upgrade, it's going to take significant surgery, but you're going to love it. Consider it a little welcome home gift from Braddock and yours truly. Your chassis is a Dynasty 2 swing arm. Platform compatible. All the access holes line up and everything if we want to fully convert. You game? I trust you, Gail. And if you hurt her, I'll cut your arms off. Sweet! This is it, Jim. My masterpiece. Your rig can now transform into a drilling platform. The suspension might feel a little tighter, and sorry about that, but you're gonna lose your mind when you see what your rig can do now. The Roche, no begging for one. Giving you enough chances. Fancy but useless, huh? What good is a drilling platform without knowing the location of deep thermal pockets? Shush! You're ruining the high. Jim, you were also officially upgraded with the Mitchell Industries oxyacetylene torch. Dual 150 oxygen regulators with a custom thermodyne cutting tip. It's a small flame for welding and cutting, so don't expect to melt the environment with it. It's pretty pyro-proof. Gotta say, proud of this one. Just check the valve reseals on the cylinder from time to time. And the Frankenstein rig keeps growing. Mmm, yeah. LaRoche, can I have a second alone with Gail? Da. Ah, I don't want to be here for this anyway. Au revoir. Listen, Gail, can you look at getting a replacement for this purifier? Uh... Dude, this is like 50 years old. I don't think a modern day replacement would work with wherever this came from. But I can look at repairing it for you. Cool. What do Tell we get to do truth, today, Jim? How did you survive in the wild for two weeks? Oh, no big story to tell. Fell off a cliff, nearly died, got rescued by a beautiful snow princess who magically healed me at her secret hideaway. Pretty much what you'd expect. Nice. Sure, I can bolster the hole a little further. Hard Always a pleasure, my man. Welcome back. <laughs> you can never carry enough grenades if you ask me. Gail got you rummaging around for scrap. Thanks, Jim. You keep fighting a good fight. Now that your rig's upgraded, test it out on a deep core T energy reservoir in the North Plains. Braddock out. Come to my attention that two eye toggers and a rock wheel are missing from the equipment jack. Whoever is responsible, return them immediately, or you will be sorry. Kill. Oh, sorry, dude. Did you not know I was here? 
Do you not remember the conversation we had about personal boundaries? No, I really don't. Of course you don't.